So now in this video, we're going to look at the BS250 here. So this is a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. And you notice that the apart number is actually on the more curved side. So it is flat right there, but it is more curved. The uh, back of the transistor, let's flip it around there. And you may be able to tell there is the actual flat side there. So it's not a TO92 package. It is an E-line package. So in any case, we're going to uh, shift the light back up and come to the transistor tester again. And we're going to plug it in and take a look at the pin layout. So again, the front side is facing us now. Flat side, the back side is back. And then so left pin is one, middle pin is two, and right pin is three. As you can see there, we hit the test button. So we're going to wire this up as a switch again. That's really about the simplest transistor circuit. So there you can see, pin number one is the drain, pin number two is the gate, and pin number three is the source. So of course the gate is the pin that controls how well the drain to source conducts. So we're going to pull back and for this circuit we're going to switch on the high side of the load. So you can see here we have the uh, LED and a protective resistor. 220 ohm resistor. I'm using a 5 volt power supply. And so the source is up here. The drain is over here. Source is pin 3. We turn it this way. Might as well remove that LED so we can get a better look here. And we're going to uh, connect that to the more positive side. We got one space from the resistor for the LED. And uh, so we got drain there. And then the LED still, the line lead the anode goes towards the positive side of the power supply, short lead the cathode towards the negative. So this time the cathode is connected to the resistor. And now the uh, power is actually already on. So the switch is off right now. The uh, transistor I should say. And we are at the positive rail. We want to go to the negative rail. And that is how we will turn it on. So if I almost went to the wrong row. So there is capacitive effect. I don't have to hold it on there. And uh, it's going to lose charge over time though. But uh, in any case, it does hold a charge at the gate, as you can see there. So now what we're going to do is move the jumper over to the positive rail right there and then go to the gate again, the uh, middle pin and we don't have to hold it there because of the capacitive effect. So this is all just like the end channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET that we looked at in the last video. It's a different uh, packaging though and there are also the uh, TO92 packaging but when I ordered this I didn't pay attention to the packaging and on DigiKey all there is is the E-Line packaging. So that was kind of interesting. But in any case, we also are going to use a switch. So with the with the uh, end channel enhancement mode MOSFET of the last video, we had the uh, resistor here going to the negative rail, and then we were tying that in to the gate of the uh, end channel MOSFET. Now, and you can see that my body can actually trigger this, and so I am alternating the uh, positive and negative with my body and I can create an alternating uh, current and uh, mostly an alternating voltage due to the power around me and so sometimes it's more positive sometimes it's more negative and that will control how that goes so that's something I find interesting but in any case we're going to tie this to the resistor going to the positive rail that will hold it off so this is something normal you will see for a, a p-channel MOSFET switch it is held to the positive rail. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Remember we're using 5 volts. So very little current. Well no current is flowing right now. But it is holding it positive. So we have the other side of the switch to the negative rail now. Right now. So remember with the end channel MOSFET. These were all opposite polarities. Works exactly the same. But opposite polarities. Now we close the switch. We'll get a direct connection to the negative rail. And you can see that now the... Uh, p-channel MOSFET here is turned on right there simple switch so in any case uh, that's really it for the switch now 
let's look at the gate is the middle pin so luckily that makes it easy when the gate is the middle pin because it gets kind of confusing sometimes you're looking at the data sheet it's not exactly clear uh, which pins they're talking about but the middle pin is usually the most obvious so now we're going to turn this uh, backwards we're going to put the source towards the negative side of the power supply so to the LED and the drain up there toward, towards positive right there and you can see that the LED is on right now and we're going to go to the gate again the uh, middle pin it is still on if you remember when we had it in the correct direction when we had the source to the positive rail and the drain headed towards the negative rail it was off right now so we're giving a positive signal it's on let's give it a low signal by pressing the button and interestingly enough you can see the LED get a little bit brighter so it's actually conducting a little bit better so it's not fully on right now but pretty close now it is probably fully on and we can go directly to the uh, rails too remember no current flows through there as I said before the reason why you have the gate kind of holding a charge is because it's like a capacitor and uh, there you can see it doesn't matter what we do so that is because for a switch the uh, transistor is backwards right now we want the source to the positive rail so that's pin 3 and drain over there so that uh, should not hurt the transistor if you put it in backwards like that it's pretty obvious and so that's one way to test it out whether you have it backwards or not and uh, so we do have the jumper here I can move back and forth there this uh, power supply I'm using it limits current I have it set to about 1 amp or, or less something like that so you'll hear a I'm gonna put uh, this jumper to the positive rail and then I'm gonna just short circuit to the negative rail and you should hear clicking and that clicking is just the uh, power supply that I'm using has to quickly adjust to the amount of current going through it so uh, generally with these circuits be very careful of the short circuit if I'm at the negative rail and I come up to the source instead of the gate you'll hear that clicking again so there we go and uh, so normally you would wire it up with the uh, power off make sure everything's wired right and then turn it on and instead of the jumper you would just use the switch so that is just kind of a, another quick safety review as I said if you have a power supply that limits current it's not as big of a deal but if the power supply will be destroyed with a short circuit then you want to be careful so in any case that is it for this video uh, it's a pretty simple circuit and especially with a transistor tester you can see where the pins are but again as we just showed just uh, uh, wiring it to the different pins and seeing how it reacts making sure you limit uh, current with a resistor and uh, whatnot that's that's another way you can tell what the pins are it's not uh, too complicated once you get a good feel for how the pins operate so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video